Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Guitars. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to my life. When I left off in the last video, which I just posted yesterday, I had said that this video was going to be all about the neck. That's what we're getting ready to do right now. We're going to cut the radius into this fretboard. Um, I need to do that while the back of my neck is still flat or at least not thicknessed. Let's take this neck for example. Now I've got some cleanup radius to do on this, but if I tried to do uh, the whole radius with this neck in this position, I would absolutely need to put a spacer underneath here so my fretboard did not bounce up and down or actually the whole neck did not give in the middle. What that would cause to happen is I would probably sand too thin on the outside edges and it would still be thick in the middle. I like to cut the radius on the fretboard while the back of the neck has still got all the wood on it. And I wanted to show you guys something that I discovered. Actually, Steve told me about it. Um, I didn't realize this when I first got this thing. If you guys will go back and look in the Cloud9 video, these two sides right here are actually in the middle of this jig. Well, there are three Allen head bolts down through here that go all the way through this base. You can move these sides fore and aft to accommodate a back angled headstock. I didn't realize that and I told you guys in the last video that I made where I used this jig that I knew I was using it improperly because I know Steve well enough to know that he thought of that. Now I'm set up properly for this thing. I've got 40 grit sandpaper. This is 3M blue. On my 12 inch radius block I'm sure a lot of you guys at this point are saying is every radius this guy cuts into a neck a 12 inch no it's not um, I am a fan of a 12 inch radius the reason I am cutting a 12 inch radius on this particular neck is because it's for a new player and I feel like a 12 is a the perfect balance between playability and speed for a new player i really feel like a 12 inch or even a 10 inch radius would be perfect for someone who's trying to learn chords but wants to be able to get good enough eventually to do some solo work or to practice scales and things like that we'll talk more about this coming up here on the channel let's pan down here and get some sanding done i watched a video this morning actually of Scott from Bonehead Guitars. Um, he just released his latest video for his great guitar build off project, and it was him radiusing the fretboard on his beautiful, beautiful neck, a red heart, Zeracote fretboard. Uh, it's got a diagonal strip. But Scott started talking about he has a problem in the center when he sands a radius into a fretboard. Now, the way Scott sands a radius, he uses a short block, like a 9-inch, and it's one of those flat ones. And he literally holds his hands on both sides of the board, and Scott's an incredibly creative, um, meticulous guy. So I know it's not a flaw in his method. It's the tooling and the setup, in my opinion, that's causing him to have that hump in the middle. And he does talk about how easy it is to sand uh, too much off on the nut side because it's thinner down here than it is up here. I commented on Scott's video and said, you should order yourself one of these jigs, this uh, Maximum Guitar Works neck hold down jig, and whatever radius he prefers, start off with one of these um, <clears throat> one plus one sanding blocks. You can cut six inches off of it, have yourself a touch up block, you're left with an 18 inch sanding block. These things are great and in my opinion, the finest 
radiusing jig setup that you can buy. I'm a fan, you guys know this already, and I thought I'd suggest that to Scott. Now, whether or not he decides to do that is completely up to him. He may prefer his way, and that's fine. I like using this thing. So my theory is this. I leave my center line marked on the fretboard. When I see that center line starting to disappear, I change over to 80 grit on my sanding block. Then I mark the fretboard up. I sand that fretboard until the 40 grit scratchers are gone and until my pencil marks are gone. Then I cut in or drill in my fret markers. So that's my order of operations. That's how I like to do it. My center line's gone. We'll draw this fretboard up. So I'm gonna switch over to 80 grit. We'll save this 40 grit sandpaper. Realistically, out of a nice high quality sheet of 40 grit, get about 10 fretboards radius from this one piece of sandpaper. So don't throw it away. The stuff's expensive as it is, and there's no real need to toss it. You don't want any little humps or any little chips of wood or anything like that on your sanding block because it will sand a groove into your fretboard. So make sure you're clean. Very little pressure. Take about 20 strokes. And I'm pretty much just letting the weight of the block do the work. I need to keep going because I can still see the middle. And that's the thing with the 40. You know, 40 grit's really thick. It's like grains of sand uh, thrown at a piece of paper with adhesive on it. So it's sticking down from the surface uh, considerably more than 80 grit would and way, way more than 180 would. So you want to make sure that you sand until your pencil marks are gone. The 80 is what's going to put um, a defined radius into the fretboard. The 40 is just to take material away, really. I got one little low spot right down here at the nut. Other than that, that's all I see left pencil-wise. Let's switch over to 180, which I've got right here. I'm going to be careful peeling this 80 grit off here so I can save this paper. Let's draw it up one more time for the 180. I still got a few 80 grit scratches up here in the wider part. So I'm going to keep working on this. Let's pop this neck out of the jig. My pencil marks are all gone. Radius, 12 inch radius gauge. I'll get my light. Now I'm not gonna do any more sanding on this until we've got our fret markers installed. I'm gonna clean my fret slots out and how I do that, I take my scalpel and I turn it over backwards. So I'm dragging the blunt side of the blade down my slot. Um, it works good, it works just as good as a hook blade and you don't take a chance on getting the sharp side on the side of your fret slots and accidentally widening those out at all. So that's how I do it. What we need to do now is I wanna redefine the center line on the fretboard so we can use the Maxim Guitar Works fretboard template to mark out our fret markers. I've given this a lot of thought. I think I'm going traditional on this thing I mean, well, I'll say traditional. Traditional locations. Three, five, seven, nine, twelve, so on. Just like it would be if he went and bought a guitar off the shelf. However, we're going to use something a little bit more decorative than what you would see in a production guitar. What we're going to use is this brass tube right here. This is a seven millimeter brass tube with a half millimeter wall which gives us a six millimeter inner diameter. I'm thinking what I'm gonna use is the white mother of pearl inside the brass tube. I think that's gonna give us some good contrast 
and I think it'll look cool on this guitar. So what we need to do first is mark out this center line. So let's get our protractor. I swear, I think this thing has become the most used tool in the shop. This Crimson Protractor, I love this thing. The fact that it's in millimeters, it's just a superior measuring system, in my opinion, for guitar work. I'm gonna use a 0.5 millimeter pencil for this line. Center line done. Okay, here is my Maximum Guitar Works 25 inch scale square end 24 fret fretboard template. I'm just using this for markup on this particular guitar. I'm gonna line it up on my center line. Now I'll get this center line lined up on this end. So now I wanna take my center punch All right, there we go. Now, how simple was that? That was way easier than measuring out all those spots. I'm gonna go down through here and make sure I'm in the center of this line. I just want my indentation defined enough that the drill bit can find that when I go to drill these holes in right here. I know I very rarely change angles here in the shop, I'm seriously considering getting myself a, uh, a second camera. I've already drilled a couple of these. I'll show you how I do it. So I just hold the neck down. I'll bring my bit down to meet it like that. And then I spin the bit 90 degrees just like that. Check it one more time. Twelfth fret. Same thing down here. There we go. Traditional location. They're in a good straight line. I'm happy. I need ten pieces of brass tube, ten pieces of white mother of pearl. And here's how I'm gonna do this. I've got a six millimeter drill bit right here, and this is not, this is just a cheap drill bit that came from a, like an eBay set. I'm gonna put this drill bit inside this tube so it does not deform as I go around here and cut this thing with the, uh, the tubing cutter. I'm gonna cut 10 of these and then I'll come right back and we'll get these things installed so you guys hang loose. I've got all my little brass rings cut. I've got my pearl ready to go in. We're gonna to have to clean up the edges of this brass where I cut it with the tubing cutter. And how I did this on the Cloud9 build, I used my brad point. This time, however, instead of taking a chance on screwing my brad point bit up, I'm going to find the bit that fits inside these tubes in a standard twist drill so I can use one of the cheaper bits. That's a 15 64th bit. I'm going to go one size up and see if I can't kind of champ for this edge to help the pearl go down in there. All done take our file and just start filing these down. I may need to move over to a coarser file. We'll see. I don't care if it's a little proud because I'm going to take the radius block to this thing once we're done. Once I get it kind of close with this diamond file, I'll switch over to the finer cut. You can see they're dirty, but they're level. All right, you guys, the last one, just slightly above the fretboard now. I'll change over to this mill file. A little bit finer cut, a little bit more gentle. If I do hit the fretboard with it, it won't do too much damage. Nice.
We got the fret markers put in. I am really happy with how this turned out. I really think the white mother of pearl in the brass tube, you know, some may call it a safe choice, but I actually think that contrast looks really good. The fact that they're inside that brass tube, that makes them custom enough to where you can look at that and tell that's not a factory made guitar. This guitar was made by hand and that's what I want on all my guitars. I don't want it to look homemade. I want it to look like it was made by a skilled artisan, which is what I am so desperate to become. And I'm making my way there, you guys. I could not have done this without all you guys helping me. Uh, so once again, I find myself needing to thank you guys for all the time, all the comments, um, all the brotherhood, all the camaraderie that we share. I look forward to that every day, you know, going through the videos and reading the comments, not just my videos. I really love watching your videos, commenting because I know you're going to do it to mine. You know, we got a built in support system here. And man, I'm telling you guys, I hope you realize how, how rare that is in this world these days. I love it. I'm so glad to be a part of this community. And I'm so glad you guys are a part of my life and my journey at this point. So thank you so much once again. We are about to sand the final radius on this fretboard. I've got 80 grit sandpaper back on my Maximum Guitar Works 12 inch radius block. This is an 18 inch radius block. So we're going to continue on this thing. I'm going to start to be a little bit more gentle on it. Now let's draw this fretboard up. I will put a new piece of 180 on this sanding block. Like five strokes and all my pencil marks are gone. All right, we got a nice 12 inch radius all the way down. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna check for flatness with our straight edge right here. I don't see light anywhere on that fretboard. That tells me right there that first of all, I did a really good job at cutting that radius in, but what it really tells me is Steve's the master when it comes to making killer accurate tools. That's what we're looking like, you guys. That's beautiful. I love it. I'm going to take my Super Asilic sanding block. It's got 240 on it. This stuff's like a fabric. And it's got this special coating on it that not only makes this sandpaper or this sanding film last for a really long time, things just brush away off of it, especially wood dust. This stuff is so killer for woodworking. Not only that, you get such a killer finish with this stuff. It is so sharp and cut so clean. I just highly recommend the Super Asilix paper. We'll start with the 240, and I'm just gonna gently go over this fretboard and get rid of those 180 marks. That was the 240. I'll put the 360 back on this pad. I just want those 240 grit scratches gone now. You can see I'm already starting to get a sheen on there. And my fret marker's looking really nice. We don't need to go any further than that right now. I've got this brass tube right here that is three millimeter with a half millimeter wall that means I need to use a two millimeter piece of white mother of pearl. I'm gonna come three millimeters from the top of the fretboard and that's where we're gonna draw this line. It looks nice and straight. I'm level with where my light wood meets the bottom of the fretboard. Now what we can do is we'll take our Crimson Protractor and I will find the center of the frets that need marks. There's that one. 
and then I'll take my square and we'll make these two lines intersect just like that so there's our first one I've got one more piece of this brass tube I've already cut um, nine pieces of it I need one more piece I wanted to show you guys how I've figured out to cut this small tiny brass tubing like this so I've got yes I'm sacrificing about two millimeters of the end of that brass tube but I've got like a two millimeter piece of steel that I've stuck up through that brass tube and I've got them in my needle nose vice grips the reason I inserted that rod in the middle of the tube is because when you cut tubing, if you don't insert something inside of it, what'll happen is it'll deform the shape on the ends. I tried this without putting the rod up through the middle and the blade almost completely closes up the hole. That center right there is open. If I would not have used that rod in the middle, we would have had that hole almost completely closed up. Now, I've been fiddling around with the way to make that happen the last four or five times I've done this style, either fret markers or side dots, either one. And this is the way that I found that works best. Let's get these side markers punched in. I'm ready to get these installed so we can flip this thing over and start shaping this neck. Um, I have not marked out the 12th fret yet. We will do that momentarily. And you see how I'm doing this. I'll just find the point and then lean into it. Just like that. So on the 12th fret, I'm going to take the Crimson Protractor once again. The first thing we want to do is find the center. And mark the center. We want to find the center of that, which is about right there. So we'll move to this side. Okay, now I'll take my square and we'll just intersect this line. Just like that right there. So a center and then a center on each side of that center. All we need to do is drill in these holes. And here is why using tape to mark a drill bit, it's a bad idea. That chaff gets built up behind that tape and it will literally move it. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Now on the 12th fret, we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, same deal. All right, we're touching, or almost touching the, the neck wood on all those, and I'm happy with that. It looks really good. We want to just go down through here and tap in these pieces, and then I'll go down through here and we'll wick in some super glue. They're fitting nice and tight. I don't think I'm going to have any gaps. I've got the super fast thin super glue from Starbond right here. It's this product. I'm not putting the pearl in yet, but I want all these fret markers to be glued in before I go to fix the centers. So I've got all these glued in. I filed this one pretty much down level with the fretboard side. I left it a little proud. I'll have to file it a little more once I insert the pearl piece down in there. But how I'm going about this, I've got just a mill bastard file right here. I'm just filing these flat. And then what I'm doing, I'm taking my awl, I'm going down in the center of that tube. Then I'm taking my little Miller's Falls hand drill with the twist bit on it and very gently drilling that hole out with a two millimeter drill bit. And then when I get all these done, we'll go down through here and insert these pearl pieces in here. One cool thing about using a, this is like a number two cut. 
uh, or a standard workshop mill file even if you do slip and hit the side of your fretboard which i've done a couple of times down through here it does not leave like deep gouges in the fretboard that won't be able to be taken care of with just standard sandpaper i won't have to do too much work to get those marks going so we're just going to start with a little drop of super glue enough to basically fill the cavity take my tweezers just like so I'd like to stir it around a little bit with the toothpick to make sure there aren't any bubbles down inside there uh, there's our side dots installed now we got to sand and do whatever we need to to get those cleaned up let's take this hard 240 super acylix paper and just go down through here and see what happens. I may need to file on them a little bit, actually. So there you can see what we're looking like. That's beautiful. I love it. All right, I'm going to sand a little bit on this side, too, just to make sure that I'm staying even. So fret markers in, side dots in. They're looking great. They're all straight. We're going to start pre-shaping this neck. And on this one, I'm going for a little bit more of a uniform neck shape. We're going for a symmetrical profile. I've got a wider laminate section down the middle of this neck, so I can use that to determine where my facets are. So on this first facet, I'm not even going to draw a line. I'm going to come to my first veneer line on both sides and we'll go down to we're about two millimeters on this side of the fretboard um, i'm going to need to work out a different clamping scenario i sure do need to get my bench vise installed all right there we go this should be better I'll take my fine cut Iwasaki just to see what what kind of results we get with it. Oh, it's perfect. First facet. Flat down the side there. Now what I'll do, we're going to flip the neck around. Do the same thing on this side. Fine cut. Knock the corner off. Switch over to the rough side. I think I'd be better off the next sitting that way. Just like that. Now. Oh yeah, much better. All right, you guys. I went ahead and finished off that, that second facet. What we're going to do now is I will draw a line. All right. Now, I'll use the first piece of the white veneer to judge this distance, and we'll connect those two lines. Knock the corner off with the fine. Switch over to the coarse. Now we're going to flatten this whole thing out using the Iwasaki. You can see what we got going on. I got fast, two facets here now, one here, one here, this is a wide one. These are going to get halved each time. So I'll come halfway in between this line now and we'll go to the center line. That myrtle's lovely. It's got that silvery shine to it. I really love Myrtle. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap this video up right here. But before we do, let's talk about what we've gotten done to this neck in this video. 
I got the radius cut on the fretboard. We're at 12 inches on the radius on this thing. I'm sanded up to 360 grit. We got the fret markers installed, which is a seven millimeter piece of brass tubing inlaid with a six millimeter piece of white pearl. I think those are beautiful. Um, I really love how that turned out. I did the same thing on the side dot markers. We got a three millimeter piece of brass tube there inlaid with a two millimeter piece of white mother of pearl. I got the initial facets cut down the back of this neck. Um, in the next video for this build, I'm gonna dimension down to about 22 millimeters here at the first fret and about 24 millimeters here. I want my final thickness to be 21 millimeters at the first fret, 23 millimeters at the 12th fret. We'll start to get that done in the next video. I didn't really want to go any further because I want to glue this neck into the body before I finish shaping all this stuff. I want to make sure that I've got a nice homogeneous flow from the neck up into the body. So I just thought it would be a good idea to actually finish the whole shaping process with the neck already glued to the body. I know I said in the last video that I would install the headstock cap in this video, but I've got an idea that I think could be pretty cool if it works out like I want it to, to be able to reveal this Murado and this Myrtle from behind the headstock cap or through the headstock cap. And I want to draw it out and do a little bit more thinking on it before I move forward with that plan. And I didn't want to wait um, to release this video just because of that. I feel like it'll make me want to rush it. And I really don't want to do that. As I told you guys in the last video, after I did this video, I'm going to shift my focus back over to the Great Guitar Build-Off project for a couple of weeks. So that's what we're going to do. I'll be back on this build in a couple of weeks, and I'll be back to releasing videos for this build at that time. I also told you guys that I'd give you an update as to where I'm at on the 7 of 9 build in the last video. Well, it's exactly to the point that this guitar is at, um, other than the fact that it's a bolt-on, and I'm basing it on a telly. The fretboard's glued to the neck. The neck's initially faceted. My fret markers are not drilled in on that neck yet, and I have not radiused the fretboard yet, but I'm getting close to that. I'll probably work on that tomorrow at some time. Monday, I'm shifting back to the Cloud9 build, and um, we're going to see where we can get to on that guitar in the next couple of weeks. I've got big plans for that thing. I hope you guys will continue to watch the videos and stay up to date as to where I'm at on all this stuff. I really want to thank you guys so much for the time you spend to watch my videos, to comment. Thank you so much to all of you guys who have hit that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please give a thought to doing that. Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date as to where I'm at on all these builds and so you can stay informed about anything I may have coming in the future. I've already told you guys I'll be announcing my next guitar giveaway on October the 1st. So I hope everybody's looking forward to that. I know I am. I'm really excited about it. I got big plans for that thing. And um, hit that like button if you feel so inclined. And until my next video, you guys, peace and love. Yeah.